Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I am your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. This is day number 12 of our trek and today we are heading up the trail and we'll look at the differences between a compass and a clock. They are both important on our trek but serve uniquely different purposes on our Wisdom Trek. Today we are recording our podcast from our studios in the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. Yesterday's journal or script was written on my trip from Columbus to Albuquerque. Today's journal or podcast script is being written on my return trip home. The technical software demo that I assisted our client with in the state of New Mexico went well and I feel we presented the product and its features in a very favorable light. We planted the necessary seeds and added the water needed. The harvest is in God's hand. We must always do our part before we can expect God to do His. I have come to realize that wisdom is gained by our varied experiences that we have in our lives. Some of these experiences may be great, and some not so much. As long as we learn from these experiences and apply these lessons to our lives in a positive and practical manner, then these experiences are useful. Life is not always easy, since sometimes it is just plain difficult. But our growth would be very limited if it were easy all the time. Friction is how the hardest of stones become smooth. As Paul and I share our personal life's experiences and the lessons we have learned, our objective is for you to get to know us better on a personal level so that we can be your guide, your mentor, and your friend. If you'd like to know more about us, please ask us questions on wisdom com about us. We'd like to get to know you better also, so please feel free to share with us on our Contact Us page on the website or email me at guthrie at com, and I'll personally respond to any inquiries. During the first 12 podcast episodes... We've set up base camp, we established seven habits and guidelines, we learned about the nine tools we needed for our trek, and we built our trek cabin with its seven columns. It's now time to head out on our trek, to begin to scale Wisdom's Mountain, and to work towards creating our living legacy. Each day we will learn from life, pause to reflect, and apply what we see and hear to gain this wisdom. As we head up on our trail today, let's examine or visualize that we have two objects in our hands, and our left hand we have a compass. And in our right hand, we have a clock. Let us inspect these closely to see how each one will assist us on our trek today. The compass and the clock will only bring value if we know how to use them properly. These are two very important tools, but for two very different purposes. And we do not ever want to confuse the two. To bring our illustration today, we want to look at a true story of Roald Amnestin and his trek to be the first team to reach the South Pole in 1911. His destination was known from the very beginning, and that never changed. His compass provided the direction that he needed to be successful. It allowed his team to stay on course. The compass always pointed to his true north, which in his case allowed him to head in the opposite direction, since he was heading to the South Pole. He never had to fear about the direction he was heading, because his faith was in the compass, along with a few maps that they had obtained from other people who had attempted the trek before him. His effectiveness was driven by this faith in his compass and guidance from the maps. As a person of faith myself and a Christ follower, God's Spirit is my compass and His Word is my map. I am confident that on each day's trek that if I put my faith in them, that the direction for my life will remain true. Not every day is easy. Some days will be bright and clear and we'll be able to see for miles. Other days will be shrouded with fog and we can easily lose our way. As long as we have our compass to guide us each day, we can be sure that we are heading in the correct direction. Secondly, the Amnesty team meticulously planned that they would march 20 miles every day. No more, no less, regardless if conditions were good or bad. Now in reality, the distance varied slightly on a day-to-day basis, but he also knew that if they were going to reach close to their 20 miles, that they must move at a certain pace each day, which would take them a certain amount of time. He relied on his clock to ensure that they marched those 20 miles each day. Roald Amniston knew that the time allotted would allow them to meet their goal. He determined to be efficient with each day. To learn more about the Amniston's 20-mile march, I suggest that you read Great by Choice, written by Jim Collins. It seems that our lives today are so driven by the clock that we forget to use our compass. Our days are so jam-packed with activities that we lose perspective of what our overall destination really is. We have become a world that is efficiently ineffective. We must use both the compass and the clock to be effective and efficient. To gain wisdom and to build a living legacy, we must keep our eyes on the summit while we plan what each day's activities will entail. A compass provides a sense of direction, purpose, vision, perspective, and balance while our clock measures duration and the expenditure of time. 
Both are very important. A compass determines our effectiveness on how well we will stay on the trail and head in the correct direction toward our destination, while a clock helps us to regulate how far we will travel each day. If we attempt to be overly efficient by completing too many activities, then we will burn out before effectively reaching our destination. As an analogy to our trek, if we try to run too fast on life's trail, we will find that we lose our footing and will careen down the mountainside into a bloody heap of nothingness. As this applies to our daily tasks, the compass helps us to be effective while doing the right task, and the clock helps us to do those tasks efficiently. Each one has its place, but the compass must come before the clock, therefore effectiveness before efficiency. The mega priorities of our compass, or our destination, governs the mini priorities of the clock, or our daily task. Now as a Christian, I look at it in this manner. To surrender our time to God is to be governed by a compass rather than controlled by a clock. A compass, therefore, becomes a symbol of our internal guidance system that provides us with the values and convictions which mine happen to be based on God's indwelling spirit and God's word. This non-negotiable governs our lives. In the same manner as the magnetic force pulls the compass needle, it is God who governs the drive of our lives. We surrender to his force and focus on those tasks which will ultimately help us to reach our destination. This is how we begin to create a living legacy. The reason I'm able to use God's word for guidance and direction are found in Psalms 119.105. It says, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. So it gives me a clear sense of direction and helps me to see how to get there. Let's keep balanced in life by effectively using the compass to guide our overall direction while we daily use the clock so that we can be efficient. As listed in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 through 17, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Well, that will finish our podcast for today. Tomorrow we will see that how far we go and grow in life is determined by us and what it takes to create a great day every day. This can be challenging at times, but certainly not impossible. So please check into camp tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. Today's tool is our full-colored PDF of our compass and clock as a reminder listing our priorities in life. It can be found on our free resources page at wisdom-trek.com forward slash resources. I also encourage you to leave a discussion topic, comment, suggestion, or question about the podcast on the comment form for wisdom-trek.com forward slash day 12 or email me at guthrieadventurecg.com. If you'd like us to discuss any of these topics or answer any questions during our podcast, please let us know. We'd love to have the interaction from our members of the Wisdom Trek team. As always, if you haven't done so, please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast player of choice, where we also have subscribe to buttons on Wisdom Dash Trek. And what's very important is that you leave us a rating on each episode. This would mean so much to us, and spread the word to everyone you know to join us on our Wisdom Trek. I would appreciate it, and thank you ahead of time. Check out wisdom-trek.com for our daily journal, wisdom nuggets, and free resources. And as we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly or fully, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy the journey, and create a great day. See you tomorrow.